Hello everyone, this is the uh, Jenkins SIG platform on the 4th of June, 2024. And today around the virtual table, we have Mark Waite and myself. If anybody else comes in, we'll add them in the list. On the agenda today, we have, as always, the container image updates for the Jenkins controllers and agents. We'll talk a little bit about the Docker based quick start tutorials. We'll talk about the work in progress on images, um, maybe a little shoot out to the hardware in the loop community. And of course, we'll talk of two major enhancements or milestones for Jenkins, which is the spring project uh, end of life announcements and the Java 21 2 plus 2 plus 2 Java support plan. Mark, anything else you'd like to address during this meeting? Those are the topics for me. Cool. Thank you, Mark. So, oh, what did I do? Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's get started. As for the container images, uh, we have two weeklies, of course, because we had the last meeting two weeks ago. So two, 460 and two and 461. By the way, Mark, um, I think you were the one and maybe you are still the one who is clicking on the right button to get uh, the Docker image um, release on GitHub created. Is that still the case? Uh, no, actually, there are three or four of us who do that. So I am one of them. Uh, the usual person is uh, either me or Damien de Portal or uh, Stefan Merle or Eve Le okay. Any, any, and anybody who has write permission to the Docker repository can do it. Okay, and it still makes sense that um, a real human being uh, does the job. It has no sense yet to be automated, right? It's. I don't think we're ready to automate because. Uh, we we place the tag intentionally mm -hmm. um, when the build has completed. And so, yeah, we could automate the placing of the tag. Uh, that would automatically launch. And I think that's actually a task in the backlog somewhere. Okay, it, nothing urgent in that. Right. But nothing um, prevents us, except we don't have the time to, <laughs> but from doing that, there is no major... Uh, obstacle. Okay, correct. Thank you. There is not, and and we had a we had a gap last week that reminds that this is a a, a bad thing that we aren't automating more because last week while I was on vacation, the Jenkins oh. core release for two point four hundred sixty did not get its record entered on GitHub for the release, and so it's going to create some extra work to to create that thing now this is jenkins core not the container the container did get the proper thing so oh. we just i think what we've got is a chore for jenkins weekly releases that we need to find a rotation for people to take on the the task to be sure it gets done that's what i was about to propose uh so <laughs> yeah thank you this should be written somewhere and somebody should take it when you're not there right Thank you, Mark. Uh, in these two releases, nothing major, at least on the container side. I haven't looked at the changelog for um, the Jenkins itself. Uh, we bumped a few versions, UB8, Alpine Linux, Olmo Linux, and UB9. Nothing mm -hmm. major. Uh, as for the Jenkins agents, we only had one new release for the SSH agent, which didn't change much except for the Alpine uh, Linux version, which bumped to 3.20.0. And three new releases for the Docker agent. We had a few uh, bumps of the version, for example, the Git version on Windows. And what else? The Alpine Linux version to 3.20.0. And we had the work of Hervé. That was a long running job for Hervé. Thanks a lot, Hervé, for doing that. So we now have factorized the JDK in docker.hcl. That's fine. Thank you. And we had a hot fix for the Windows Server Core LTSC 2019 um, because a bug was discovered. I think it was by Vincent Latombe. Uh, in another repo, come on. So no, that's not what I was looking for. That's the bug on uh, the Microsoft website. And that's not what I was looking for. Uh, what was it? Yes, the 815 discovered, yes, by Vincent Latombe, unable to be an extension of inbound agent because there is a bug in the Windows uh, container image. So we have to, we had to put 
Damien had to put a hot fix in order to pin the version until Microsoft fixes the bug. That kind of things happens even to the best. <laughs> Then, um, for the Docker-based quick start tutorial, so nothing major these days. We just keep it up to date with the plugins, with the Jenkins agents and so on. It's still working. Um, I tend to use it and reuse it maybe too much. I think, you know, when people have a question about Docker, Jcask, um, Jenkins, plugins, whatever, I say, hey, <laughs> we may have a solution for you. So that's not the ideal solution for each and every problem, but I tend to use it quite a lot. And people are still using it. I'm still amazed by the number of the total downloads of our uh, Docker images on the GHCR. Um, it's not called a, a registry. I was searching for the name. It's not repository, it's registry, whatever. And I'm still working on the main Jenkins installation, thanks to Docker. I had some discussions earlier this week with Damien regarding that, because for the time being in the draft, I have I have a big section on how to start with the wizard, as we have in the other tutorials. I think it's you, Mark, who told me, um, you know, to switch because I had a very simple version. First of all, just click, do uh, just enter Docker Compose up minus. D and minus minus profile something and boom, you've got a working Jenkins controller and agent, but it's maybe too simple. So I'm going as the other tutorials with a wizard, find the right admin password and the logs and so on. So that's two parts for the time being. And Damien identified other personas uh, we would like to write installation instructions for. And so I may create a few other PRs to address these personas. And I would love to finish the dogs <laughs> as it is now. Yeah, it still needs some work, whatever. Now, uh, for the progress on images, uh, the controller and the agents, there is nothing going on for the controller. I didn't spot anything. And as for the Docker agents, we have the automatic uh, PR created by Update CLI regarding the GDK 21 versions. And it's still being updated. In fact, it has been created in March and still going on. And it won't get merged as is because the main problem we're having is that Tamarind doesn't supply uh, ARM32 images for EA versions anymore. It used to be the case before the JDK21 was official. But nowadays, they just don't build it anymore for ARM32. And that's okay. I mean, that's a pity for me because that's a platform I love. But for most of the people, that's okay. And we can still use Jenkins with JDK17.4 quite some time if i'm not wrong so that's kind of okay so so bruno i'm given the pattern that tamarin has taken of not doing 32-bit arm builds shouldn't we consider removing 30 the ea concept entirely i'm i'm so if if they're not going to do arm 32 in jdk 17 now, now maybe that's okay. That that really is going the wrong direction from what you like in terms of being able to run a controller on an ARM thirty two machine. Oh no, this is the agent. Sorry, this is not the controller. This is the agent. Okay, yeah, so but, yeah, I love also to run agents on ARM thirty two. Uh, running controllers is kind of difficult because it's they are slow. such small. Yeah, too slow. Uh, right. we, you have to change the timeout, and even with that, it's kind of. Too slow. There are very few ARM32 machines that are beefy enough to host a Jenkins controller. So we can just forget about them. But right. yes, for agents, it's just marvelous. I love them. And I'm not stuck for the time being because I still can use them with JDK 17. But for JDK 21, well, I'm stuck. Yeah, but but, but I guess the no, the the thing thought that was on my mind is I'm still thinking, should we drop the concept of early access entirely? Um, maybe we retain it for Java Java 17 as a legacy thing, but drop it from Java 21 and later just because the the early access things that are being provided by Tamarin aren't aren't useful to us. Yes and no. I think we should get rid of the ARM32 target for uh, the JDK 21 and newer uh, JDK. But okay. 
if ever we were to add a new platform, like for example, RIX-5 or ARM64 Windows, um, I think the early access would still make sense. So I would propose uh, to just get rid of ARM32 for dedicated 21 and newer, but maybe keep the old EA thing for other platforms. But maybe it's too early because nobody said we wanted to have RISC-5, for example, even if it's working for me, that's not a proof that it will work for other people. Maybe we don't want to uh, bother with a new platform now. Who asked for that? Nobody. So I don't know, maybe we could just park the whole EA thing and just, just um, uh, get it out of the closet a few months from now when the platform is considered ready or useful for Jenkins. I don't know. What do you think about that? Well, so so I think there actually is interest in Risk Five, uh, and you make a good point that maybe that is reason enough for us to retain the EA concept, and then it's just as time allows, we 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 tidy it so that it we do the cleaning so that it doesn't have this these long standing requests to merge a pull request that will will simply fail. So yeah, okay, good point. So it's, I think you've persuaded me dropping the uh -huh. EA concept is a bad idea in particular because RISC-V is a likely upcoming platform and ARM32 isn't a bad platform and it's not a bad choice for for container agents. So we could conceive of, yeah, good. So let's, it stays and, and we continue. Yeah, thanks a lot, Mark. Um, by the way, while desperately, desperately searching for ARM32 binaries for JDK21 in the various all the access releases, from Timurin, I discovered they had some ARM64 Windows <laughs> releases. So I was kind of shocked. I know how much you love Windows, um, uh, using Jenkins on Windows. And I don't know if you even tried Jenkins on Windows on ARM. <laughs> but right. yeah, I don't know. But they are... They do provide, Timurin do provide uh, some binaries, but they are very early access. They are just there to see if they can be built, but they are not considered mature enough, in fact, um, to be built because they even don't test it with the GA test. Mm. I don't know how this is linked to TCK or whatever. I'm not a specialist of right. TCK, but it's not ready yet. I copied and pasted what I uh, had as an answer in their Slack channel. They are building them as evaluation pipelines, but they're not ready yet to be a GA release. So they are there. Makes sense. And, and I run, when I run a, a Jenkins agent on ARM64 Windows, I'm using a Microsoft build of OpenJDK. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's, easy to, it's easy to do. It works great. I've had no problems that I've detected with it. Uh, I haven't done a lot with it in the last several months. So, so, but it was showing no problems when I was experimenting with it. It works just fine. Uh, we don't have to use Temerin always. I like Temerin for the official releases because then it's only one supplier to track. But yes. I certainly run ARM64 Agent on Windows using the Microsoft build of OpenJDK for ARM64 Windows. You do. Okay. I do. <laughs> Good yeah. to know. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yes. That's uh, wild. <laughs> but why not? Um, by the way, I don't think Docker is ready yet for Windows on ARM. Yeah, I'm not. Is I've it? not tried it, and I won't try it. I'm uh, Docker on Windows is is a rather dark corner for me. I have no <laughs> no no real interest in it. <laughs> me neither. Okay. Thank you, Mark. So that was it for the. Um, ARM32 and the, the PR that will stay open and that will close one of these days it will never get merged, I think. And we have the same kind of um, PR for the Docker SSH agent. It's also an update CLI automated PR, and it also fails because of um, the ARM32 binary not available. Uh, any question or comment, Mark, before we move subject, we change context? No okay. further. Thank you, Mark. So now a sh quick shout out to the hardware in the loop community. I don't know if you remember, Mark, last February when we were in FOSDEM, we met a nice gentleman, um, Miguel, 
who was working for Red Hat, uh, spoiler alert, he's still working for Red Hat, and he had a, pro a project called Jumpstarter. His whole goal was to create some kind of device uh, to manage um, embedded systems and link into CI, CD, so that whenever you change the firmware or something, you have something you can put, uh, upload the firmware to and get some feedback uh, via serial console or something, and then try to upload something on the SD card and test again and again and again. Yes, something that is, that's why we're talking about loop, because as we do in CI CD most of the time, change the code, build it, ship it, deploy it, and then get some feedback and do it again. So it has one, uh, I would say, one proof of concept, uh, some hardware you can plug some Raspberry Pis into, for example, or ESP32. And he created a group of hardware enthusiasts who have the same kind of system and who want to have the, the same goal. You know, for example, we have, I forgot the name of the project, but there was another presentation for them about that, a hardware in the box, I think it's called. It's the same concept. You have a box, you plug some devices in them, and then you try to do the whole CI CD thing. Um, most of the time when we go to first them, we have some people from a um, huge company testify. Uh, they use Jenkins for IoT, but most of the times they have some their own Python scripts or something. There is no plugin that they use. And I'm part of this hardware in the loop community to try to uh, glue things together. I don't know if we will produce anything, but we have the same kind of needs and goals. And we would like to do something together in order to have CI CD simpler for people dealing with embedded systems. That's it. We have, they have uh, quite a lot of um, repos already. We have a biweekly meeting on Tuesday. And that's it. Everybody is welcome. Now, uh, spring project, Mark, it looks like it, he, it is progressing. I see a lot of things in the bomb, for example, Basil trying lots of things uh, lately. Could you tell us more about that? Sure. Yeah. So, so the, if you scroll back up just a little, right. So, so the key milestones are happening as listed here. File upload was released two weeks ago. Uh, no issues have been reported with it. Looks great. We, we did find one plugin that was com catastrophically incorrectly configured and was bundling a bunch of things that it should not. That plugin will need to be revised. Uh, it's a problem in the plugin. It's not a problem otherwise related, but the this change surfaced that problem and showed, oh, here is this problem. We have several plugins with similar problems where they made a mistake in their definition and the mistake caused their plugin to be bloated by all sorts of junk that should not be there. That's just a bug in a plugin and mm -hmm. the plugin needs to be fixed. So file upload, good condition. Require Java 17 and Jenkins weekly looks very good. Um, oh. June 18th. So we are now two weekly releases away from that. Uh, we'll likely do a blog post to mm -hmm. announce that. And uh, we're going to make the change. Then one week after that, or possibly two weeks after that, depending, we'll switch from Jetty 10 to Jetty 12. Still using the old style Java X imports. That's why the EE8 there, mm -hmm. uh, J Jakarta EE8 is javax.servlet. Jakarta EE9 is jakarta.servlet. So that June 26th or July 3rd will switch to Jetty 12 with EE8. We did it intentionally one week after the Java 17 transition so that we've got a week to watch Java 17 and see if there are any other big surprises. Yeah. Then the next step is Jetty 12 and EE9 and Spring Security 6. And that one, we don't have a date yet, still being explored, but, and this is the cool thing where Platform SIG members can actually help. Um, one way to help is be sure if you detect a case where we're using Java 11 today for something, 
we need to switch to use Java 17. So that's that's important. That would help. That identify tasks is a good thing. The other, and the way you identify them is we create tasks in, Jen in the Jenkins issue tracker for those things that need to be changed. The other is to test drive this Jetty 12 plus EE9 prototype from the Jakarta branch. Um, um, basil has been okay. regularly pushing changes to that branch as he discovers things. It's it's actually a stack of things that he's got. And the stack is impressively complicated, but he's the only one who has to deal with the complication. So I'm delighted that I don't have to deal with the complication. I can just be a tester of this branch and everything else just works. So what, what Basel has to maintain is patches for Jenkins Jetty, patches for Jenkins build tools, patches for Jenkins Windstone, the container package, oh. package for Jenkins, patches for Jenkins itself. He has to maintain those for Jetty 12 plus EE8 and Jetty 12 plus EE9. He brings them all together into this Jakarta branch. And that thing generates a build. So if you click on that ci.jenkins.io job link, we'll actually see this is where builds builds come out. Oh, did I not include a link to the to oh interesting. Huh. I gave a bad link in that. Shame on me. So go to core. Oh, sorry. I was about to click on the... No, it's the same link. I thought you had created two links. Sorry. I know. So I, just, core. I, I created a bad link, obviously. Core. Or, yep, there we go. Core and then Jenkins. And at the very top of the list is Jakarta. Yeah. And that's the one. And if you see here, the under last successful artifacts... Click the first link, org Jenkins CI main, and it will it shows us several different components, Jenkins bomb, Jenkins core, and the one we want is Jenkins war. So click that. And if you click, yes, next link there. So now this one, there's a war file there. That Ooh, thing nice. is a Jenkins ready to run. And so it can be used like any other Jenkins, as though any other Jenkins regular weekly release, but it has Jakarta EE9 imports and yet has full compatibility or really, really good compatibility. Full is never, never a safe thing to say, <laughs> right? Really, really good compatibility with, for instance, all the plugins that I'm running. Oh. So if you go back to the to the meeting notes. I have a Jenkins controller that I run inside my own lab. That Jenkins controller that I run has on the order of 200 plugins installed and has 50 plus agents, including Fedora or no, including Red Hat Linux, uh, Debian Linux, Alpine Linux, FreeBSD 13, FreeBSD 14, Windows 10, um, etc. Uh, several several other variants. Oh, ARM sixty four based Ubuntu twenty four, ARM sixty four based CentOS eight, uh, all sorts of things. Oh, and that's where my Windows Windows ARM sixty four agent is connected. Yeah, and I I run all sorts of test jobs there, just as part of my normal normal checking. So there are hundreds of jobs that run there. Quite regularly and i've found i found about 10 days ago i found one issue reported to, to basel basel said oh thank you good you've just highlighted a particular plugin that is a good stress case for this thing i'm working on it fixed oh, impressive the, the crucial thing here is what can what kind of testing should people do here yes. so maybe we should put a note here take some some notes here i can put them in separately uh, bruno it is that the places that tend to have problems are forms presented to the user
where they where they don't retain mm -hmm. they that do not retain the values entered by the user oh so what human beings need to do is interact with it enter data and watch to be sure that yes in fact that data was preserved and and it worked just fine the other is the other place that can have problems is watch for stack traces in the Jenkins console log in case those might point to something interesting. Mm -hmm. Got it. And so anybody could test in fact. Exactly. Now, now I don't think we're ready to say, oh, the whole world should start start testing this thing. No. But the practical fact is people in the platform SIG tend to be willing to do more aggressive things, right? We're, we know we're, we're willing to try things on the cutting edge. And sometimes we get cut when we're on the cutting edge, you know, sometimes the, <laughs> the knives are sharp on the cutting edge. That's okay. But that's uh, already if... impressive. That doesn't mean it will be finished uh, by the end of August, but it's very promising nonetheless. Right, Sorry, Mark, I... right. Cut. Exactly. You said it very well. Now we could we could consider making this technique easy, more approachable for others by creating a, our own container image that, that oh, people could yes. use to say, I want to test drive here. I'll use a container image or, or a Docker file. What I've got is a Docker file that defines my environment right now. My Docker file is on a private, um, Jenkins repository, but I could easily place it on a public Jenkins repository if there are people who are interested in it. So maybe what we do is let's put here as a comment, if you're interested in testing, uh, send an email to Mark Waite. Uh, so for instance, Bruno, one of the things that I uh, thinking about where could we test this we could conceive of having you try it, it during your tutorial development work. Yes, it did. Right, saying, okay, you, because today you you probably say from Jenkins slash Jenkins colon 2.460, right? Or 461 or whatever, or 452.1, whichever one. one you use. Okay, so you choose an LTS, good. So conceptually, we could say, change your from clause, your from yep. statement, to something different and use that instead. It would be pretty easy. I already have a fork of the quick start tutorials uh, on my own account, and it's already building and storing in the GRTR uh, registry Docker images oh, with oh. the right tag of the name of the branch. So it would take me just a few minutes to get it up and running. The question I have is how should we track the um, the builds you know when do we know we have uh, another one could is it something we could do with update CLI, you know or is there a rest could, api could very easily certainly there well so let's let's look go back to the jenkins page the artifacts page um so here there certainly is a rest api that will let you download let you browse this oh, okay. and look so open up org jenkins ci main and open up the war link the version numbered war link right so that is certainly available from from a by a rest call where what you you can say is there's a way to say give me the most recent in fact here let's let's look at it let's let's yeah, walk this through so on jenkins go to jakarta top this not number 72 but one to the left of 72 okay notice that it has a scroll downwards and you'll see further down you'll see a table of links oops not quite that far down right here we go top of your screen there's last build last successful build if you save that open that hyper if you copy that hyperlink and paste it what you'll see is its last successful build Yes. So it does not encode a number. It oh. encodes just the concept of last successful build. Now, if mm -hmm. you look, if you click the build artifacts link, 
Still. You see, it's still last successful build in Org Jenkins CI main. And we're still now at this point, oh, it becomes yep. version specific, but one back, it was not. So conceptually, we could open this from a, a rest call or from update CLI, read that version number, and that then tells us what to download. Yes, even the when we click on Jenkins uh, hyphen war, we we'll see have a non-version specific link. So it just becomes specific there. Yeah, right. we could do something, I guess. Exactly. We're we're quite close to something that could be automated to allow reg ready testing of this. My worry is that I'm not sure it's worth the oh, effort yeah. to automate. <laughs> I don't know how long we're going to be in this testing mode. It's mm -hmm. it's a it's a very good question. We will certainly be in it for at least three weeks, right? Because we won't we we for till June eighteenth we won't have Java seventeen till at least June twenty six. So three weeks in, we won't have Jakarta or Jelly ten twelve. Or no, Je excuse me, Jetty twelve. So June twenty sixth is the earliest that we envision this, and it's probably at least one to as many as four or six weeks after that before this happens, because there's this particular patch stack is very large, right? And mm -hmm. we'll likely want the security team to review it. We'll want all sorts of careful reviews before we merge this to to weekly. Got it. So, so maybe it is worth it for us to, to say we're going to create a, a container that we can use as a basis. Right. Now it it does mean downloading the war file ourselves. Right. It's not we can, we don't get the convenience of building yes. the Jenkins, uh, well, okay, my example, what I do is I say from Jenkins slash Jenkins colon 2.461. But you and then three the steps later, I replace the war file completely. Yes. Okay, I get it. Uh, and and how you do it, how you might do it is entirely up to you. But I think, yeah, I think it's something idea. to consider, hey, how can we do this? Um, I get it. Is it supposed to stay with a 461 or will it change? No, no, it every changes week? every week, right? Of course. It, because he's building, he's he's stacking patches on top of weekly, it will always be the next weekly as a release mm -hmm. as as the the next weekly's release candidate is where his stack lives. Okay. Oh. Got it. I see what I can do. <laughs> no promise, that's all. Uh, Mark, do we have still some time for the late, last subject or should uh, we wrap it up? Well, uh, I think the only thing there is a request for, for the, that was mentioned in the previous, which is idea, help, help me detect Java 17 changes that are needed. And then there's the very bottom one, four tasks in Jira that needs needs work. We we really can't do the June 25th transition until we fix those four things. I see. Uh, would it be possible for you to give us the links later on? Not, not just I can, right now. Uh, yeah, I can put them into the notes. You bet. Thank you so much. I think we're done, Mark. Uh, thanks a lot. I learned lots of things today. <laughs> um, the video should be available from 24 to 48 hours. Mm -hmm. And we'll see each other two weeks from now. Thanks a lot for your time. Bye -bye. All right. Thanks.